right here on the Muskegon Channel. Andy O'Reilly, Dave Keglade. Do you know what today is, Dave? Uh, today is National Selfie Day. Well, no, I mean, that would be your version of today. Well, because <laughs> you're self-indulgent and somewhat vain approach to I, life. I don't take that many selfies at all. Well, you don't, but just, you're, let's be honest, you're kind of vain. I'm a little vain, yes. Yeah. Look at me, I'm Dave. I'm no. on TV. Ain't I pretty? No, you know what today uh, is? No. It's the longest day of the year. Oh, yeah, because it's the first day of summer. See? There you have it. All right. And then there it just keeps getting shorter. And, and I'm <laughs> thinking it's more of a natural thing. It's more of the right. summer solstice. It's the longest uh-huh. day of the year. So, okay. You don't like the longest day of the year because you like short days. You like darkness. I do. I'm, because I'm, it reflects your guy. soul. I, I really like the moon and I, I like it when uh-huh. it's dark. I, at 5.30, dark, good by me. Uh-huh. I'm good with that. I, I was yeah. coming home from Berlin Monday night. There, it was like... Ten forty-five. Uh-huh. You could still see visible light off to the west. <laughs> that bothers you immensely. Yeah, I wasn't really bothered by it. I was kind of like, oh, look at that visible light. I wish it was dark. <laughs> I was like that. <laughs> you seemed a tad aggravated just before we went on, and I was just curious if you maybe didn't get enough sleep. Maybe you maybe you're upset because today's going to be so long. No, I'm. Or, it's, it's a busy week for me. I've, yeah. I've got a lot going on. Uh, you've you've got this seven thirty thing this week because you're pushing your son into football, which is a, b- a bad idea. I did least. not push him into it at all. Okay, he, I, sure. I gave him a choice. Okay, these are all the camps you can do. You can do soccer. You can do bas. Well, they didn't have basketball available. But they had a bunch of other stuff, and he chose football camp. I'm like, well, okay. Why wouldn't you let him go to art camp? I didn't not let him. He chose football camp. But, but you didn't put that as an offering. I don't know that art camp was one of the activities listed, oh, but I gave him a rundown of everything he could, he could do. Work a little harder. Art. Maybe he'd like to be a poet. If he wants to be a poet, that's fine. I'm supportive. Maybe, but am I? Am I? Maybe, it, maybe he wanted to go somewhere where we could play fireworks. Yeah. Is part you of me know? glad he chose football? Of course. Well, you know, football. You know, that's a lot of closed head injuries and stuff. That's a. That's overblown, and b. Uh, they're not. They're not even doing that right now. Okay. Not even contact. And people. People make a big deal out of this. We're, that, that's. We're talking at the collegiate and NFL level. Okay. Mm-hmm. Not at the. Not at the seven-year-old level. There aren't seven-year-olds with CTE. Let's let's saying, stop being stupid. Well, I'm just saying. You know, it starts somewhere, and you're you're yeah. kind of sending your kid down a. So someday when he's you know he's a. Let's, let's that, be honest. Yeah. Someday he's going to he be grown up, and he's going to have you know rage incidents and right, like yeah. And just, just you know, we'll he's already back to the first day of summer in 2017 when <laughs> you were pushing your kid to be a yeah. football player, and he's already got some rage in him. This actually lets him work through that. So, oh, really? Well, no, yeah. He's, oh, so he's you're like any him to, to to vent his rage on other people on a football yeah, field. Absolutely, really. That's the oh. healthy. That's the healthy way to do it. Well, get all that really. aggression out. Get that physicality out. <laughs> get the emotion out. That's a that's a good positive thing. Well, maybe maybe if he express, express, expressed his emotion through art, it would be more healthy. <laughs> yeah, art and hacky sack. That's another. There and you chili go. Chili oil. Yeah, there we go. That's what I want. That's cool. <laughs> I'm just trying to look out for the kid. Maybe, maybe maybe you could just start making things out of hemp. That would be great. <laughs> It's, it's a, an option. That would be fantastic, absolutely. Tie-dye some more T-shirts. That would be cool. Hey, and you know what? I would be the supportive parent in that. Whatever whatever you want to do, that's cool. Yeah? You know. Well, you're the father. Within reason. Father. I'm the Yeah, I'm the model parent. What can yeah. I say? That's right. All right. What are we going to do in the news here? Let's get into it. The central train station in the Belgian capital of Brussels was evacuated on Tuesday after a An attempted terror attack. Police shot a man wearing an explosive belt who shouted, God is great, in what officials are calling a foiled terrorist attack. Uh, Damage was limited, and the suspect was the only reported death. Uh, A little curious about the use of the word foiled. I mean, I didn't think we foiled anything since, you know, um, robbers were tying damsels to uh, railroad tracks. (laughs) But uh, apparently it was foiled. Yeah, very good. Good for them. It's nice when it's nice when the suicide bomber is the only person who dies. And I, so, I'm all for that. Yes, you know, like this clown that shot shot up that con- congressional uh, baseball thing the other day. Yeah. Shoot him on sight. Be go. done with it. 
What else is happening? The Mattel Company on Tuesday unveiled a collection of diverse Ken dolls. Barbie's iconic boyfriend is now available in three body types, slim, broad, and original, and seven different skin tones. You can also choose from eight different hair colors and nine hair styles, including, Andy, a man bun. You can get a Ken with a man bun, (laughs) as well as various eye colors. Ten new dolls arrive in stores today with five more in the coming months. So, you know, I know you're going to be... Uh, probably a uh, birthday shopping for Colton or, or you know, when the when the holidays come up, you get him the Ken doll with a man bun. I was, you know, I was thinking more. Of this this might be right. something Max would enjoy. Oh, without question, he Other would than be football because it's not yeah, so aggressive. Right, a little less aggressive. Get him the get him the slim Ken with the. Uh, oh, you got something against fat Ken? No, nothing against fat Ken. In fact, it's you know, I like I would think. Uh, now let me say I, I'm gonna I'm gonna just go out there and say you know they, the dolls the collection they do not have morbidly obese Ken they don't. and I think that's wrong I you think do. they're fat shaming I think Mattel is fat shaming by not having a fat Ken doll okay that's what I'm saying I think they're Look fat shaming I'm against it this is from Mattel too I'm against it see that you know what that is Magic Eight Ball yeah it's from Mattel too let's ask Magic Eight Ball if Dave's making a good choice pushing Max into football ah oh, jeez. Yes. Oh, the answer is yes. Of course. Yes. There you go. Pretty much screws your uh, your point. But no, uh, the I, I like the fact that Ken's coming out with the, that Mattel's coming out with these diverse dolls. I thought we needed more skin tones that that more effe- uh, reflected society as a whole. I think that's a positive thing. I think they're probably going a bit overboard with the with the man bun, but you know, okay, to each their own. But once again, they are fat shaming without having the fat Ken doll. I think okay. you need you need to have fat Barbie too. <laughs> Trying to stuff those stuff her calves into those leggings. I'm just saying. I, let's let's just let's let's widen the spectrum. Some Michigan residents took to social media after the entire Upper Peninsula was omitted from an online ticket marketplace map. New York-based TickPick responded with the. We got the important part of Michigan. Isn't that good enough? Another <laughs> response said, we're sure the UP of Michigan is lovely, and I assure you we didn't intentionally leave it off the map, but seriously, it's just a bunch of forests. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is such a New York thing to do. Well, and, and in fairness to them, I've never been to the Upper Peninsula. No? no never been to the bridge. I, I, as far as I know, it's not actually there. It's just pictures. It's like the moon landing. I, You know? Who knows? Could be yeah. all fake. Well, no, it wasn't. It, that was not all fake. I'm just it saying. It's nice. It's, it's very mountainous. It's, it's mm-hmm. very, uh, I went to that uh, waterfall thing up there one time. Um, that was, you know, waterfally. Uh, yeah. I've been to a couple of casinos there. They're very casino-y. Okay. Um, I went to the the thing where the boats go through, um, the locks. All right. That was cool. Um, and, and you know what? There's a lot of forest up there. Uh huh. So they're correct. They're technically correct. There is a lot of forest. Yeah. Um, let me ask you: Can you name without googling? Can you name three cities or towns in the Upper Peninsula? Three. Uh, let's see. Not here. name Mackinac. Uh, Not name Mackinac. Three towns or cities in the Upper Peninsula. There would be um, Baraga. There. There would be um, Ishpeming. Ishpeming. There would be. Um, Uh, wow. Um, hang on. I didn't think you'd get two. Well, hang on. <laughs> I'm already hang impressed. It. Um, Sault Ste. Marie. Okay, there you go. You um, got the three. You got the three. I'm impressed. I think I would have gone with Sault Ste. Marie and Iron Mountain because I know Tom Izzo came from there, and uh, uh, is Houghton? I know there's there's is there is Houghton in the UP or is no. Because I know Houghton Lake is in the upper lower peninsula. Right. Sault Ste. Marie, and then I would have assumed one of the Mackinac cities or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I do not know my Michigan northern, my, my UP geography. I'm no. completely ignorant. They have pasties. That's what I know. Pasties? What yeah. are pa- I don't even know what pasties are. It's, it's like a pot pie. Oh, okay. Yeah. What's in them? Pot pie kind of stuff. Oh, okay. That's all right. All right. Well, so so you 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 appreciate the Upper Peninsula, and I'm completely ignorant. Well, I, I didn't say that. I mean, you don't, you don't appreciate. You're completely ignorant about plenty of things. Don't get me wrong. 
That's not fair. Well, <laughs> it's not necessarily untrue, but it's not fair. Oh, okay. All right. Finally, Muskegon Heights Public Schools has hired a new superintendent promoting from within. Former assistant Renee Garcia received an offer from the school board earlier this week and has accepted. Garcia replaces Elena Zachary Ross, who has accepted the same position in Okemos. Garcia will begin her new job on July 1st. I think that's a positive it, 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 it's a positive light on a school when they promote from within because they obviously think that they're headed in the right direction. They yep. want to kind of keep things uh, on the same level or, or going up as opposed to bringing somebody in from the outside who isn't familiar with the school or how they do things or maybe they want to change something completely because they're concerned about the direction the school is headed. So I think that's probably a positive thing for Muskegon Heights. I'll tell you what. I went to, uh, I get to go to schools. And you know, do do things and speak or whatever. And yeah, um, I was at the Muskegon. I was at the Muskegon Heights School uh, last year, and they were in a pep rally because there was that threat from the government that they were going to shut the school down, right? For whatever reason. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was there for a pep rally, and we taped it and and did this kind of thing. This guy walks into the the gym, which was filled with students, and you know, their st- st- students are chatting and they're you know gabbing it up and whatever. And it's time to call this thing to order. This guy blew a whistle. And you could have heard a pin drop. Those kids immediately shut up and they paid attention. And he explained to them, he said, this is what this is about. This is who's going to be speaking. And this is what's going on. And they were they were model students through the entire event. Wow. Did he, have them stand up, did he have them stand up on stage and sing the school song nope. and then kick anybody? Okay, he didn't go Morgan Freeman on no, them? No, none of that. But okay. it, was, it was remarkable how, how attentive and how well-behaved yeah. they were for the for, – what everybody thinks that they know about the school. Right. You go to some other schools, kids are up in those seats, and they're just gabbing and talking and on their phones yeah. and carrying on and blah, 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 blah. And it, it's just, you know, the it, it, and again, it's one of those things where they think, you know, everybody knows what's going on when they don't. The, the kids right. that are there are really, really good students and good for them. I'm, I'm all for the Muskegon Heights School. All right, fantastic. Yep. Sports Tigers lose again, five to four. Oh. They fall to Seattle. Okay, you did you watch this? Uh, we watched uh, like the some first four innings or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And you're just you're just uh, down on the Tigers season, even though it's only June. Well, I mean, it just wasn't that much fun to watch last night. You yeah. Know, and she, finally, Cindy went to bed, so I switched over to documentaries, and it's like I want to watch <laughs> something quiet and 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 you know relaxing. It's a. It's early season, mid season baseball. It's you know, it's fairly uh, fairly lax right just, now. You know, it wasn't that it wasn't that exciting to watch. So All right, good. Muskegon beats Lake Erie ten to seven. They uh, move their record to five hundred on the season at six and six. Cubs win, Cubs win, Cubs win. They're getting off the Schneid. They beat San Diego four to nothing. That sports. Dave, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Wait, are, wait, are we doing this tomorrow? Because tomorrow, I thought you were yes, heading up to. Yes, tomorrow we'll be doing this. Okay. Uh, Friday then, we will not. Okay. Monday we will not. And then uh, Tuesday we'll be back at it again because I got Electric Forest to work this weekend. Oh, the whole weekend and, and Monday you're going to be too tired? Well, Monday I'll probably get out of work at about 3 o'clock in the morning. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Under, okay, so you're not, okay. Yeah. That's okay. That's okay. That's under, understandable. Well, that's okay, right. you know. But then don't forget, July 3rd and 4th, you and I will be yes. at, uh, at uh, Rockstock, downtown Muskegon. Can't wait for that. It's going to be good times. A lot and, of happy, uh, fun times. A lot of happy, yep. fun people. May, maybe staying down there for a day or so. You never know. Oh, you really? Might be. I don't know. Get yourself a we'll hotel see. room and do the West Could Coast be. thing. How nice Just is that? Just chillax. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. See ya.